we have found space-time geometries where this Waco bomb occurs naturally. And this is also why we can use Waco's as particle detectors. In 1961, the Soviet Union tested the Tsar Bomba. At 50 megatons, it was the most powerful nuclear bomb ever developed by humans. But even this monster weapon turned less than 1% of its mass into energy. A black hole bomb could turn almost a third of its mass into energy, making it the most efficient energy source in the universe. Now physicists are asking, could an alien civilization ever build such a device? Has nature already done it? And might astronomers be able to see them in our detectors? Buckle bombs is a term coined in the 70s. Uh, spinning black holes are a very wonderful object. They have a region that we call the Ergo region. And if you try to go there in a spaceship and try to remain at rest with respect to me, you turn your engines on and you're like again, trying to go against the flow of the black hole, you can't. There's no engine in the universe that allows you to sit still with respect to distant observers once you're inside the Ergo region. And Roger Penrose realized many years ago that this also gives you a way to extract energy away from, the, from black holes. If you throw very low frequency light at a spinning black hole, you're going to get back more than you threw in. You're extracting energy away from the black hole. Okay? And this Russian physicist, Zaldovich, realized that you can produce a bomb. You can produce a, a device that extracts energy very rapidly. This idea was very simple. Suppose there's an alien civilization that's super developed, and what they do is they take a spinning black hole, they find a spinning black hole in the universe, and they surround it by a mirror. Okay? If you surround it by a mirror, then a low energy photon that get, goes into the black hole gets amplified. It extracts energy, but now there's a mirror. So it's it's reflected, goes back in, it's amplified, out, amplified, and so what you get is an exponential extraction of energy. Actually, this is exactly how nuclear fission works, how a nuclear bomb works. It's a fission process, it's an exponential cascade of energy. So if you wait a short period of time, you're going to get your bomb, your cavity, flooded by photons, flooded by light. And the idea was to use this as a source of energy. I would cut a window open, I would let this light flow in, and I would use it for my people, for my planet to light my city, and so on and so forth. This is what's called a, a, a black hole bomb. And it's a bomb just because it's an exponential process. So if you don't, if you don't open a hatchet, then your mirror is just going to explode. Okay? And actually, let me tell you that we have found space-time geometries where this black hole bomb occurs naturally. One idea is that if you have some field, some quantum field, uh, which is not very heavy, but it's not too light either, so that kind of its uh, characteristic wavelength, so-called Compton wavelength, is comparable to the size of the black hole, then these fields can get uh, stuck there and keep feeding off the spin energy of the black hole and grow. So you make more and more of them. Uh, so it's kind of like uh, imagining that you're on a roller coaster or a Ferris wheel, which is a spinning, um, and then uh, it kind of spins you up. Right? And then if you have the right condition, it can, uh, it can spin you up a lot. And uh, for quantum fields, the interesting thing is that uh, it could actually Amplify so it could be when you increase this energy, you can increase the number of particles. So you may start with very little or just vacuum, uh, no particle at all. But just from vacuum fluctuations, you could make a lot of these these light fields. Um, so that that's kind of the idea is that basically the black holes could uh, spin up these fields out of vacuum, and then um, uh, that would they could explode. Basically, you have. Uh, you could even use, use up all the spin energy of the black holes uh, and produce these fields. So the implication would be that in the, with the right condition, all the black holes wouldn't be spinning because they would just lose all their spin energy into these light fields. And then you may get uh, gravitational waves from these light fields. And then you may also get 
um, best of the scalars that come out of this. So there will be some fields. Or so when I say scalars, I mean just this light field. So we have best of light fields that are coming out of And this is also why we can use wackles as particle detectors. If, if you get a field, suppose the photon has a mass, is massive. If the photon were massive, exactly the same thing would happen. The black hole transfer its rotational energy to this massive photon and deposit, deposit the energy as a condensate of massive photons outside. That's the reason why we can use black holes to detect new particles. These fields, we don't know if they couple to our detectors. Uh, we may or may not be able to see them, so there are ideas. In fact, um, my students have worked on them, uh, on um, detecting these bursts of the scalars, or bursts of just fields. Uh, but uh, even if our detectors don't couple to these fields, they still have energy, so they would have gravitational wave signatures. So in particular, you expect uh, at certain frequencies that are the most unstable, uh, you expect to see uh, gravitational waves that are emitted at those frequencies. And this is a very characteristic signature. You see at some specific frequencies, like a loud uh, burst of gravitational waves for a long time, basically. Like many of these ideas, uh, exotic ideas, uh, there are no, uh, there's no precise prediction because there are free parameters. They may not be there at all. Uh, but there's been a lot of excitement on this front. It sounds more like a black hole nuclear reactor rather than a, a bomb. Yeah, it is, yeah. You can use it as a nuclear reactor if you're clever and if you have a sufficiently advanced civilization. Maybe there's one out there doing this. I mean, But could I use it as a weapon? Like if I was an evil emperor and I wanted to take over the galaxy? I would guess so, for sure. You could. I hope you don't do that. Uh, but yes, I am sure you could use this as a weapon, of course. I think you could use black holes as a weapon. <laughs> uh, black hole bombs, uh, I think you, you need these fields to exist. Unfortunately, we don't know. So uh, I think if you could will these fields to existence, uh, depends on the powers that you're, you're given as an emperor, then I think that would work. But if these, fault, these light fields don't exist, unfortunately, there isn't. <laughs> yeah, much you could do. This film was shot at the Black Holes Inside and Out conference in Copenhagen. And we have several upcoming films with many more experts who reveal the cutting edge in black hole research. So stay subscribed and find the link to our black hole playlist in the description below.